Hello, welcome back to Lil's Vintage World. Today I have a rather huge book haul, so I'm gonna get straight into it because otherwise I'm going to be here forever. It's that big. Right, starting off, from a charity shop, I've got a couple of audiobooks. Firstly, I picked up this. This is Agatha Christie, and then there were none for £1.50. This is read by David Horovich, and um, it's just a CD one. Can't open it. There we go. CD one. Um, I listen to these in the car or if I'm doing like a big sort out type of job in the house. Um, this one is cracked, but it's fine. And, and then there were none. It is good. It's not my favourite of Agatha Christie's, but it is good. So I'm happy to have that for 150. I thought that was a bargain. And also, Mappa Lucia. Now I have seen this new and nearly bought it, so I'm glad I didn't, because this is sealed. It is also £1.50 and it's read by Miriam Margley's. Now, if you uh, follow me with my EF Benson journey for the Mappa Lucia series, you will know that the next book that I have to read is Mappa Lucia. Well, reread, because I've already read it before. Um, but I might listen to it on the audiobook version. I think that might be quite fun and maybe vlog it or something. That might be interesting. Let me know if you're not likely to do that. Then I picked up some classic crime. So I've got a Georgette Heyer, Heyer, never know how to pronounce her surname. Uh, this is Envious Casca, Casca. I don't know. Um, so Georgia Heyer is more well known for her like romance novels that she wrote, but she did write 12 classic crime and I have slowly been reading them. I think I've read about three so far. They're good. I mean, they're not Agatha Christie, but they are, they are good. Um, this one is a Christmas one. So I think I'm going to wait until December to pick this up, but I think, how much were you? 150. There's a theme, isn't there? 150 theme. I also picked up Hidden Depths by Anne Cleves. This is one of the Vera books, which I read for the first time a few months ago. I read Harbour Street and I really enjoyed it. I gave that four stars. And I did say I was gonna pick them up on my Kindle instead of in paperback, but when I see them in charity shops, because they're so cheap, I thought actually probably cheaper than what I would get on a Kindle. So I do pick them up. And it might be books that I just read once and then redonate them or pass them on to someone else to read but, um, or go in the loft. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to reading that one. This one sounds really good actually. It's um, set on Northumberland coast and this woman arrives home to find her son strangled. He's laying in a bath covered with wildflowers and then there's a similar murder that's been done in a rock pool, again with wildflowers around and Vera obviously needs to um, catch them before they strike again. The next book I completely blame Julie for from The Hungry Book Web. Hello Julie if you're watching. But it is Queen's Gambit by Elizabeth Fremantle. Now I owned this book and got rid of it. I'm pretty sure about it. I'm not sure actually. Or it might have been sat on my wish list. I don't know. But Julie did a live show on her Instagram a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about historical fiction. And one of the authors that was mentioned was Elizabeth Fremantle. And when I saw this in a charity shop couldn't pass it up because again it was £1.50. Um, so this one is about Catherine Parr, Henry VIII's sixth and final wife and I was like yes please. Then I picked up some more crime so I picked up book one and book three of the Grand Chester Mystery Series. Book one is Sydney Chambers and the Shadow of Death and book three is Sydney Chambers and the Problem of Evil. They're both by James Runkle. Um, I have read a um, one a prequel sort of book of this before which was a bit silly because I hadn't read any of the actual books but I do really like the tv series Grantchester so I thought I'd give them a read you might be able to tell I'm currently reading one already but they're a bit father brownish because it's a vicar set in the 1950s kind of onwards um and he's this turned sleuth and yeah I thought I'd give the the books are go. Now, if you watched my June and July 2020 reading wrap up, you will know that I read Cuckoo's Calling and I said I was looking forward to read the next books. And lo and behold, in a charity shop, I saw some more books. So I picked up The Silkworm for £2 and also Career of Evil, also for £2. Now, this one has been read. This one has not been read. And if it has, they've read it like this because the spine is not cracked at all. Um, so this one, The Silkworm, is when, I've already watched the TV series, so I know what happens, but when a leg is um, sent to Robin, which is Strike's like assistant, um, 
yeah, like a severed leg, as you do. Um, and then this one is about an author who goes missing and the wife turns to strike and says, can you help find him? Um, but it turns out it's a little bit trickier um, than first imagined. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading both of those and yeah, I'll read them in publication order of whichever one came out first, but yeah, I'm, I love the cookies calling. So hopefully I love these two just as much. Then I picked up this beautiful little children's book. So this is this mini classic of The Wind in the Willows. The Wind in the Willows was my favourite book when I was a child and my dad used to read to me and do all the voices and it was lovely. And this was on a shelf at Cherry Shop. It was also £1.50. And it was sat like this and I was like, oh, I love it. And I tried to walk away from it and I just couldn't. And it has just wonderful pages. And look at the illustrations. I just couldn't pass it up. You know when you see a book that means something to you and you just, yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't walk away from it. So I picked it up. And to be fair, it's been about two, maybe three years since I last reread it. So it's definitely due a reread. Um, so I think I'll reread it in this wonderful, beautiful edition. Then I picked up another book in a charity shop, which I can't believe was in a charity shop really, because this seems pretty brand new. And this is Wave Me Goodbye, so Stories of the Second World War, edited by Anne Boston. And it's part of the Virago books. And I know it's new because these are the new spines that Virago have been doing, which, have I got any? Yeah. You can see some there by Elizabeth Taylor. Those are the new ones. Um, so I was really surprised to see this. This is a collection of short stories. Don't usually do short stories. Do classics, but not usually short stories. But I was flicking through, wasn't I? Onto the contents pages. First author was Romerson and Lehman. And I was like, right, done, sold. But there's also um, authors like Rose McCauley, Barbara Pym, Jean Brees, Dorothy Parker, Elizabeth Bowen, Elizabeth Taylor's in here, so I couldn't pass it up. So yep, had to get to that one. And also I picked up Fallen Angels by Tracy Chevalier. I've never read a Tracy Chevalier before, but I was doing a little bit of research and looking for historical fiction on the women's suffrage movement. And apparently this is that. So that is why I picked it up. I was looking for it around. If I saw it in charity shop, I was like, I'll pick it up and I saw it, so I got it. Also, oh, from a charity shop, I saw this little charming book. This is Homer Simpson, Little Book of Laziness. And it's just funny. There's lots of bits that you can like pull out and stuff. And it just looks lovely, like quite random and lots of different bits like stuck together, like little post-it notes and things, but yeah, if you like The Simpsons like me, you'll probably like things like this. Um, and I'm, I'm always up for picking fun, silly reads up because they always break up the kind of heavier reads. Speaking of heavier reads, um, I did pick up a couple of non-fiction from charity shops recently. I picked up Becoming Queen, How a Tragic and Timely Death Shaved the, re shaped the Rain blah, blah, of Queen Victoria by Kate Williams. So of course we're talking about Princess Charlotte here who sadly passed away, but um, of course left um, Victoria to become the next heir. Um, I have read a book by Kate Williams before. I've also met Kate Williams before. She's very, very nice, very lovely person. And I really enjoyed her book, which was Rival Queens. And so I'd like to try and read this. I have a very interesting relationship with Queen Victoria because her views on the women's suffrage movement is something that I do struggle with but I'd like to I'd like to read more and learn more about her so there we go giving that a go also I found that in the fiction section I was like that is not fiction and then a book that I can't believe I managed to get hold of this is a book that has been sat on my wish list for ages um but I finally got round to finding it in a charity shop. This is My Heart Is My Own by John Guy, The Life of Mary, Queen of Scots. And I believe John Guy helped um, with the Mary, Queen of Scots film that stars Shawsha, I can't think of her surname, and Marco Robbie, which I wasn't the biggest fan of that film, to be honest, but hey, hey. Um, this book has been sat on my wishes for ages. I saw it in a charity shop a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, oh no, I really want it, but I don't want to walk 
home with it because I live up a hill and so I left it and then as soon as I got home I instantly regretted my choice um, and I went there a few days ago and they had it it was there still it was waiting for me so I picked this up for two pound and really looking forward to reading this because I just haven't read it <laughs> that's why then another comic book now this is another one that I found in a charity shop and this is Simpson Comic Clubhouse I like the cover I think that's fun I have started to read the Simpson comics and I've actually been really enjoying them so yeah gonna give that a read does anyone else read Simpson comic books let me know and from shops I will start off with Amazon um now I try not to buy from Amazon if I can help it if I can I like to shop from independent bookshops but from Amazon this is the it's the only place where I seem to be able to pick up these Elizabeth Taylor books I don't know why um but I needed the last two to finish my collection in these beautiful um editions illustrated by Sarah Maycock um so this is Blaming which is the last one of her full-length novels and this is Palladium which I think is the second one this one's a bit Jane Eyre-ish by the sounds of it and yeah their last two um, but then I still have some of her other works. I haven't read her short story yet, so exciting. Um, and then lastly, I have three books that I got from my local independent bookshop. Now, my local independent bookshop is lovely. I really like it. It's small and petite. Um, and sometimes I find things in there that I just oh, think, oh, I'd like to pick it up. Um, but most of the time I um, message them and say, oh, could you get me this in and they do and they're wonderful so a couple of um books that they got in for me so the first one that they kindly got in for me is this one look at that wonderful wonderful cover um this is that i was watching god by zora neale hurston and it's stunning and the other one that they kindly got in for me is this one uh, this is also by virago and this is crew train by rose mccauley haven't read any rose mccauley yet but I'm going to change it. This one sells right at my street. It's a 1920s book and it is about this woman who lives abroad but then her father dies so she comes to stay with relatives in London and it's like a satirical take on the 1920s like bohemian set. Sounds quite evil and more vile bodies doesn't it but yeah apparently it's meant to be very funny so I'm excited to start reading that. And then the last one I have to show you is just wonderful. This is The Tale of the Castle Mice by Michael Bond, of course author of Paddington, um, and illustrated by Emily Sutton. I've never heard of this before but I just, it was facing this way and I just thought how stunning is that cover? And I flicked through and I saw this. They live in a doll's house. Look at that, isn't it absolutely stunning? And yeah, people come to visit the doll's house. They live in a doll's house in a big castle. And it's just, it, I've read it and it's wonderful. And yes. Anyway, that is it. Uh, that is it. <laughs> that is it for my book haul. I feel quite tired now and feel like I need a nap. <laughs> um, chat to me all things bookish in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I shall see you soon for the next one. Take care. Bye.